please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. The big expectation from the budget which uh, went by was that corporate headline corporate tax rate would be reduced. Well, that did not happen. Does that make India uncompetitive as uh, compared to some of the other developed countries which have uh, promised to at least bring down their headline corporate rate of taxation? Uh, who else but uh, uh, somebody who's seen these matters at close hands around the globe to answer that question? Jane McCormick is a global head of tax at KPMG and she's uh, with me sitting down to answer some of those questions. Jane, thanks very much for your time. Great to have you with us here. Thank you. So, I mean, I just want to dive straight in. Does it make India uncompetitive, the fact that we didn't do anything about the corporate tax rate? I don't think the change in corporate tax rate necessarily makes India uncompetitive. Um, business decisions, investment decisions are made on all sorts of criteria of which the tax rate is only one. Um, I was here this time last year and I was asked a very similar question about the tax rate. And at that time what I said was actually I didn't think the tax rate was that important. Um, it was more important for India to make strides on ease of doing business. Now the good news is that uh, those strides have been made. I think 30 places in the rankings, the global rankings have been gained in that last year. Um, so I think in India is still an attractive place for investment. Um, looking forward though, I think the rate might become an issue. Uh, we've seen US tax reform take the rate down from 35 to 21. Rates generally going around the world are going lower. So it is something that probably the government needs to start thinking about. Mm. I would say one thing though, um, the trend globally has been for the rate to go down but at the same time the base to expand. Mm. So um, the overall effective rate of tax is not necessarily changing that much. Mm. So whilst you may need to think about the rate in India, mm -hmm. it's also worth thinking about how the base is expanded. Mm -hmm. Make sure you protect the Indian tax base. You mean the, ta the tax revenues for the government? Well, the, 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 uh, the basically the, the, the taxable profit on which the rate is applied. Right. So what sure. you've seen in other countries is that the rate has gone down, mm. but the base has been expanded by the denial of deductions for things like interest expense. Okay. I mean, so in the US, for example, we're talking about 21%? Yes. Uh, and you're saying one should look at that in context to exemptions, etc., going away. Exactly. So part of the, re the rate reduction in the United States has been paid for by the loss of other deductions, interest expense being the main one. Right. Um, they've actually left a gap sure. in the US. So sure. the rate reduction is more beneficial than the, the base expansion. Um, in other countries, that trade-off has been closer. Sure. So the base expansion has, has compensated for the race re rate reduction. Sure. Same is true in the UK as well, where the proposal is to... That's right, yes. So okay. in, in the you know, rate has come down, mm. um, but the base has expanded through things like the di diverted profits tax. You said this will become an issue going forward. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, how big an issue will this be? Well, it's always difficult to tell because, as I say, investment decisions are made on a number of criteria um, and India has the advantage of being the fastest growing economy in the world at the mm. moment. Sure. So uh, in that situation you can afford maybe to take a higher uh, tax rate if you think you're going to get a better pre-tax return. Mm. Um, but as I say, it, it, global tax rates are sort of coming down to somewhere around 20%. Mm. 15% differential can make a big difference to an investment decision. Mm -hmm. um, so I think you know that that will necessarily. But here have to in change. India, uh, it doesn't look like there's that much room to maneuver around with lower tax rates. Uh, we've just had a big transformation with GST, yeah. mm -hmm. and that is yet to stabilize sure. in terms of monthly revenues running at some par. Yeah. Uh, so and, and that's that's I, I guess why I'm saying that it's about a looking forward rather than what needs to be done now. Mm -hmm. um, if you look in most developed economies, corporate income tax is a relatively small part of the total tax take. Sure. Um, and that's sort of deliberate because mm -hmm. obviously um, high corporate income tax rates can act as a disincentive mm -hmm. to investment. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, the government still needs to collect the taxes that they need to do to pay yes. for all the social goods that we want. Um, and in most countries, that that slack, if you like, has been taken up by indirect taxes, by GST, mm -hmm. uh, which is obviously the direction of travel in India too, mm -hmm. but you quite rightly say it needs a while to bed in. Mm -hmm. So uh, unless and until that has bedded in, I think the business community will understand that we need to be a little bit patient on reduction of the corporate income tax.
Since we just had the budget which was presented, I mean, any feedback that uh, you've got from people you might have spoken with, companies operating here in India, about the budget with regards to tax and the tax aspect? Well, I think um, the sort of big news is that there were, apart from the corporate income tax sure, rate, sure. there were no big surprises. Mm -hmm. um, in, in my world, people generally think that is quite good. Okay. We like stability. We don't sure. like a lot of changes happening. Sure. So the fact that you know maybe for tax geeks like me it could be characterised as a bit of a boring budget sure. um, for business that is probably a, a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, there are one or two things that, um, that people are picking out. Um, a couple of things I will mention. There's a change in relation to taxation of the digital economy, mm -hmm. um, which doesn't come into effect just yet. It will depend on the signing of the so-called uh, MLI. Mm -hmm. Um, now that's an interesting development. Lots of other countries are doing similar things, so taxing foreign multinationals on the basis of their digital presence rather than physical presence. Okay. Um, but I think that's something we all need to watch mm -hmm. because there's a danger of um, confusion and chaos in the international tax system mm -hmm. if co countries start doing that without us reaching a consensus on how there that isn't should that be much approached. focus on that. And you bring it up now, mm -hmm. but just uh, can you uh, talk about that a little bit? Is it done in other countries? Uh, well, other already? countries are thinking about it. There okay. are one or two countries that have already introduced a tax on digital downloads, for example. Sure. Um, there's quite a lot of discussion on taxing um, what we would call a digital permanent establishment. So even if a business has no physical presence here, mm -hmm. if they're doing business uh, digitally, mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, then they could be taxed either on the basis of the number of downloads or the number of users. Um, that, that's been discussed in a lot of countries at the moment. Um, but as I say, I'm, I, I would be fearful of countries going their own way before we have some sort of international consensus. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we will run into double taxation, um, and which is nearly always a bad thing for business. Uh, I mean, with regards to GST, uh, is everything kosher here in India or you think there are some best practices from other countries which can be uh, sort of adopted here? Um, the, I, I, I think it, you know, it's developing well here. Um, I think best practices I would say in terms of legislation um, and the, the, the tax policy then there are some developing best practices in terms of keeping it as simple as possible because simple taxes tend to um, be easy to comply with sure. and operate better as, as collection mechanisms. Um, so that's not having too many rates, um, trying to be clear about where the boundaries of tax and non-tax taxable sure. supplies are. Um, so th there are some things around that. Um, the other big thing though is the administration of it mm -hmm. uh, and particularly the use of technology. Mm -hmm. um, because where indirect tax systems have been introduced and are operating very well. Um, it, it's generally been on the basis of um, investment by the government in technology. Mm -hmm. um, so I, everybody keeps on mentioning, of course, um, Brazil has been a country where tax is now collected in a way that means every single invoice mm -hmm. passes through the government mm -hmm. um, before it's paid. Mm -hmm. So the government has absolute full knowledge of all payments. Mm -hmm. It's easy for the taxpayer to comply with. You just do your transaction and all that technology happens in the background. Um, and since that system has been introduced, tax receipts obviously have gone up. I mean, that's been the big issue here, invoice matching. Yes. I mean, mm -hmm. it's been criticised by some. Some mm -hmm. say it's absolutely necessary. Uh, I mean, your thoughts uh, on that? Well, I think it is the way forward. It's been proved to work in other jurisdictions. Okay. Um, uh, I don't underestimate the difficulty of making it work in a country like India. It's mm. a huge country. Yes. Um, you've historically had a big informal economy. Mm. So, um, you know, it, it's not going to happen overnight. Right. I don't think you should give up the effort to make it work just mm -hmm. because there are some difficulties on the way through. Okay. Uh, the other big thing is the rate itself and actually not just one rate, yeah, but multiple many rates, multiple yeah. rates. Mm -hmm. You think that is a uh, that needs to be over the next couple of years brought down to maybe a single rate with few exceptions? Mm -hmm. Well, there's a trade-off here. As I say, the more simple you can make the system, the easier it is to administer and, and for people to pay. Mm -hmm. But however, if you talk about this, this um, transfer of tax take from things like corporate income tax to GST, mm -hmm. 
And then the criticism of that that is often made is that GST is not a progressive tax mm -hmm. or in some cases can be a regressive tax. Mm -hmm. um, so you need to be careful about that. Um, and rate differentials obviously can make a difference in how progressive the tax is. Mm -hmm. So traditionally you will see exemption tax on food. Mm -hmm. Um, on children's clothing, on books and so on. Mm -hmm. um, because you do want to make sure that poor people are paying less of their mm. total income in tax than rich people are. Mm. So I think there's a trade-off there between sure. making the tax fair and progressive sure. versus sure. making it complicated. Sure, but here you've got large, I mean very large sectors which are right now outside the uh, ambit of the GST, I mean, yeah. petroleum for example. Yes. Or alcohol, liquor, I mean mm -hmm. the entire sectors uh, outside real estate. I mean. Uh, so do you think these need to be brought within uh, the GST itself mm -hmm. and then as the economic survey before the budget pointed out, I mean the actual rate which is required uh, to, which, which is going to be revenue neutral in that sense is actually, is, you know, between 15 and 16, 15 and 17 percent essentially. Mm -hmm. uh, that needs to be the standard one rate with of course exceptions as you also said. Yes. Well, of course, in most countries in the world, the sort of things that you're talking about, like fuel, is, is within the scope of the equivalent of, of GST. Mm. Um, obviously, there are particular economic conditions in India mm. that may make that a different political choice that needs to be made. Mm. Um, but generally speaking, bringing things like that within, within the would scope... Would be a good idea overall. Would, well, it would be what the rest of the world sure. thinks is a good idea, put it that way. Sure. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the, the point about the lower tax rate, you think that eventually does lead to buoyancy, tax buoyancy, I mean uh, revenue buoyancy? Um, well, I mean, there's, you, you mean does, if the rate is low, is there more compliance? Yes, yes, yes. Well, I mean, there's lots of evidence around the world that the higher the rate, if once rates get beyond a certain level, mm. then you increase the incentive for people to avoid the tax. Mm. Um, so there's a, there is a sort of probably a golden number mm. um, which is high enough to maximise the revenues, mm. but low enough to encourage compliance. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's trying to find that sweet spot. I, I mean, here the feeling is if you leave, I mean, it's almost as if you're, ask, uh, you, you, you're leaving revenues on the table. That, not, that might not, not necessarily be true. I mean, as you lower the rate, compliance goes up. Generally More speaking, people start to pay yeah, tax. I mean, there, there's a famous thing called the Lapper Curve that mm. is the economic theory of how high you tax mm. before people start to take action to evade or, or avoid it. Mm. Um, I'm not sure that's perfect science. Sure. It's a difficult judgment for a government to make, mm. is because obviously you want to maximise revenues by keeping the rate up, mm. but that can be counterproductive in some cases. Just to come back to the uh, first point, which is competitiveness, what do you think India can do uh, to, because you said, I mean, taxes are just one thing, yeah. there are various other things. We've got a market which is big, growing, fastest growing, uh, fast gro growing economy as well. But what can the government here do uh, to keep the foreigners coming, keep the capital coming, yeah. which is so necessary? Well, um, as I say, the, ge the general ease of, of doing business. Mm. Um, so outside of the tax regimes, not my area of expertise, but um, you know things like um, you know a government's consents, um, the you know the the legal system. I mean, the new bankruptcy laws are a part of that. I think. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, um, the, the regulation of, of um, uh, various types of investment, all of those, I think, um, ne need to improve in some regard um, and, and are improving. Mm -hmm. uh, if I look specifically in the world of taxation, then leaving the rate aside, again, on the, on the side of doing business, um, there's a lot to be done about the way that tax policy is formed mm -hmm. and the way um, tax is administered. Mm -hmm. Now, India did have a, a reputation for being uncertain in relation to tax policy. And a bit adversarial as well. And adversarial, yeah. uh, indeed. Okay. Um, the, so the, the tax policy thing, I think, has improved a lot. So mm -hmm. I think I was here, maybe it would be three years ago, mm -hmm. when everyone was talking about the Vodafone case. Um, and there was yeah. a lot of fear of retrospective right. legislation or, or legislation that had retrospective effect. I think that fear has receded. Mm -hmm. Um, so that, that's a very good thing. Mm. Um, in, in terms of litigation, mm -hmm. there's still a way to go. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, if I talk to clients who operate around the world, mm -hmm. they'll probably have five times more cases of litigation going on in India than mm. they have in the rest of the world. Sure. sure. Um, and that's not a situation most people want to be in. Sure. So, 
more, more needs to happen on that front. Um, but things are improving. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, we, we were just talking earlier about um, the APA program and the fact that um, bilateral APAs are now happening, mm -hmm. which is obviously an opportunity to, to get in talk to the tax authorities and agree the treatment of something mm. res you know, prospectively, mm -hmm. which takes away a lot of that uncertainty. So yes, definite, def definite progress, but more to go. But compared to say three years or four years back, I mean, uh, do people feel there's certainty in the tax regime and the administration of it? Mm -hmm. Is there more certainty? As oh, you, as absolutely. You I mean, there, there, there is a real difference now mm. to the way it was seen. As I say, let's go back three years when you know, it came to this equivalent um, uh, event. Uh -huh. um, and the fear of retrospection, um, the government does seem to be honouring its promise mm -hmm. in that regard. Mm -hmm. Um, and the, the uh, dealing with the administration, I think, is, is improving. As I mm -hmm. say, still, still some way to go. And I mean, the government by far is the largest litigant uh, in India. Uh, from your uh, conversation with companies, has there been more willingness to settle and, and get matters over with quickly rather than sort of them dragging on, which always hinders future investment? Um, well, I think most of my clients would say that they, they would always try rather settle. Mm -hmm than litigate mm -hmm. or continue with litigation. Mm -hmm. um, the only question is how, how you do that. Mm -hmm. That's, as, as a matter of process, it's not always been easy okay. to do in okay. India. Okay. And the other thing, of course, is what, what uh, a business won't do is to concede a position that sets a precedent. Um, so, you know, they may be saying, well, I'd be willing to give this up, but if I give this up, is this effectively binding me to a position for the future that I'm not happy with? And that is with? a problem for the government as well, one reckons. I, I'm sure it will be, yes. Right. Yeah. Right. But, but, I mean, if you look around the world, the amount of actual litigation in relation to tax has massively reduced. Mm -hmm. And that's because I think everybody figures out that it's not actually in anybody's interest mm -hmm. that we spend a lot of time litigating on tax. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, we'd rather get the tax paid and move on sure. and, you know, business ca carry on doing its business. Um, so in other parts of the world, um, different things have been introduced to try and reduce the amount of litigation. So the APA program, or, you know, prior agreements sure. is part of it. Alternative dispute re resolution is another one of it. What the Dutch call horizontal monitoring. Mm -hmm. So that the tax authorities are talking to taxpayers on a real-time basis okay. and can resolve issues mm -hmm. before it even finds its way into the tax return, never name into the courts. Okay. Got it, Jane. Thank you very much for talking with CNBC TV 18. Appreciate your time here, as always. Thanks indeed. My pleasure.